or not? We're live? Yeah, we're live. Really? Yes. So were you supposed to give me the thumbs up? I, I said you were giving me the thumbs up just now. I thought you were going to give like, me the thumbs live. up. We're live. Why are we talking? So we're live? We're live. Okay, well, I'm here in the studio. Today, I thought it would be clever to have an assistant help me with some of the odds and ends. Uh, but you can see how that's going. So, But you're not fired yet. I think we just got to keep working it out. We got to talk it out. Things have got to happen. Oh, and also, I... I phones because that was distracting too so good can we hear me now we can hear me now okay good today i just wanted to talk a little bit about moisture challenges and how best to deal with them that is the topic of today's chat last week's went really well we're on to another chat a lot of the time beginners intermediates and even advanced players reach straight for moisture control systems and fancy weird gadgets uh, and pipe bags with uh, 13 zippers on them, okay? But that is a mistake. That is treating the symptom rather than looking at the underlying cause of most moisture problems with the instrument. So this underlying cause, all right? You guessed it. It's a bagpipe that is not set up well, okay, that has issues. And you're probably familiar with a lot of those issues, right? Basic maintenance problems, bag that's not airtight, maybe we've got some leaks, something like that. Um, <clears throat> Chantry, that's too hard. We talked about it, that in depth last week. Uh, calibrated or miscalibrated drones, drones that are taking too much air, that would be a big problem, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so on. Uh, but today we're going to talk about one aspect of bagpipe setup that is often overlooked and is crucial to the avoidance of moisture issues. All right, so, uh, and that issue is, what are we going to do when we're not playing? What are, what are we going to do when we're done playing? What are we going to do just before we start playing during the day? Okay, decisions that you make, okay, when you're not playing, when you're done playing or before you're going to play again, uh, can mean the difference between having a long playing session uh, the next time you play or having a very short one that's cut short due to moisture problems. So we're going to explore that a little bit. I'd like to go over three things today that are big on my mind when it comes to this issue. And the first one is to be aware of your conditions whenever you're playing, okay? So is it hot out? Is it cold out? What's the weather? Yes, yes, that's all important. One tool that I use, which uh, has really helped me quite a bit over the years, and I've learned a lot about how conditions interact with my bagpipes, is the hygrometer here. It's a sort of weird sounding word, but the bottom line is, uh, it shows me the humidity in my space and it shows me the temperature, okay? So this basic awareness of my environment really helps. And let me just give you the bottom line, what I've learned uh, with a lot of experience. The colder the temperature in the room, the more moisture is going to accumulate in my bagpipe and the faster that is going to happen, right? So today we're at 69 degrees. And uh, experience tells me that's going to give me some time, some good playing time, but probably not a ton, right? Meanwhile, uh, if it was 75 or 80 degrees in here, that would give me a much longer playing time. And then what does the humidity on the hygrometer indicate? Uh, which is kind of an interesting one. You might think, ooh, more humidity, more moisture, but that's not actually true in my experience. Actually, the more humidity, uh, the more stable my instrument becomes faster which is really kind of interesting. It's mainly the temperature that contributes to how much moisture is in your bagpipe. So that was thing number one. Thing number two, um, we wanna store our pipes wisely when we're done playing, okay? So obviously, if we store our pipes in such a way that they retain a lot of moisture, that's obviously gonna cut down on my playing time that's available to me tomorrow, but also a common mistake to watch out for uh, is, to, is that you're accidentally over drying your bagpipes which uh, maybe you're reading my mind at this point if you're following along, over drying my bagpipes is going to lengthen the period of time it takes my bagpipes to stabilize the next day. So we need to find the right balance between the two. And momentarily, I'll give you a quick example of what I do by default to try and find that balance for myself. Okay, final little tip here is before you start playing, never play a cold bagpipe. So when I start playing, uh, each day, sometimes you'll find, especially in the winter time here in New York, is you'll find when you touch the bagpipes, there the wood is quite cold to the touch, and presumably the reeds and the bag and so on are actually quite cold as well. If I just start playing full bore right away without thinking about um, without thinking about it too much and just allowing myself to play too much, what's going to happen? Just like a cold drink, 
on a hot day, right? If I blow hot, moist air on that, it's gonna start to condense and it's gonna condense immediately. And that condensation is, you know, the, where the vast majority of any sort of moisture in your pipes is being caused by, right? So we wanna avoid that. Uh, instead, play a little bit, let it warm up a little bit, play a little bit more, let that wood gradually come up to temperature without forcing too much condensation in your bagpipes from the get-go. Okay, so those are the three things. Be aware of your conditions. Highly recommend grabbing a couple hygrometers. They're very cheap on Amazon. You can get like five at a time, and I highly recommend it. Store your pipes wisely and never play a bagpipe that itself is cold. Okay. So what do I do on a daily basis to mitigate that? So earlier you just saw me wrapping up a tune. It was supposed to look a lot more organic than that, but then we had some technical difficulties and my acting abilities are very weak. But uh, what would I normally do? So when I'm done with my playing session, the first thing I'm gonna do is give everything some air, all right? So usually what I do is I start by disassembling the drones. And by the way, I, I'm getting my, my hemp a little bit of air too, because we all know condensation can affect the hemp, so there's, there's the added bonus there. I'm gonna take things apart, and then I'm gonna take the reeds out and give them some air. So I'm gonna take this out, and sometimes you'll notice, not today, I haven't played a lot, sometimes you'll notice condensation forming here on the individual pieces. Okay, I'm gonna take uh, each of these out. Don't worry about the cane drone reeds, I just happen to be playing cane right now, uh, but the same would be true for a synthetic setup, okay? I'm gonna take everything out, I'm gonna allow it to dry, and I'm just gonna let the air do its work for a few minutes, okay? Uh, if you're at band practice, I very much do this right away, right? I don't want the moisture to sit into the reeds and soak in too much, I take everything apart, maybe have a chat with uh, somebody at band for a few minutes before I put things back in the case, but here just in my practice room, maybe I'll go about some work or continue talking to you guys for a couple minutes, and then what I'll eventually do is put them back in. Just a quick thing, uh, you see a brush here. I actually rarely ever use brushes and I find this part of the process, just letting my bagpipe get the air that it needs, 96% of the time is enough. Uh, by the way, I play a sheepskin bag. Opening up that bag cover and just letting the air get in there, definitely a good idea, okay? And then what I'm going to do for the second phase is I'm gonna put everything back together, okay? And I'm gonna let it sit for the rest of the time, right? So I'm gonna put this back in and, I, and I'm gonna check. You should see any condensation that, that was on your bagpipes has evaporated off naturally. We're gonna check for that. And then we're just gonna put things back together carefully. Uh, and then another good idea would be to somehow remember which of your tenor drones go uh, in the stocks. I think I guessed correctly. Now the chanter I'm not gonna put back in the pipes. I'm sure you've experienced uh, problems like that before. Uh, the chanter's gonna go back in a cap. Um, I like the uh, tone protector chanter cap, but it's not necessary. Just a regular cap will do just fine. I'm gonna cap that for the evening, okay? And I'm also going to put my drones back together, okay? Because I don't want my hemp to overdry. I don't want anything to overdry, all right? And this basic strategy allows me to maximize the amount of playing time, uh, maximize the amount of playing time that I can get out of my pipes, but uh, also minimize the amount of time it takes for my bagpipes to stabilize. Okay, so that is the basic spiel for today. And um, this is my take on the issue. I'm sure that there are lots of people out there with opinions on this matter, and we'd love to hear from you at this point. So that's my take on the bagpipe moisture challenge. Uh, you can please submit a comment on this video below. Let me know what you think. And uh, let me know if you're enjoying these little sessions that we're doing. And uh, there you go. That's, that's our episode two. Hope you have a great day and we'll probably see you next week for another one of these.